Hello YouTube, we're Underleveled, my name is Kat. And my name is Taka, and today we'll be making some spooky Pokemon treats that's sure to please any Pokemon master. So, let's get right into it, shall we? And if you enjoy our video game cooking videos, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It really does help out our channel and we really appreciate it. So first I'm going to be going over how to make easy cupcakes for our Drifloons and Litwicks. It's very simple because we're just going to be using good old box cake mix. It makes things so much easier and we don't have to impress anyone. But if you do want to impress someone, then feel free to make them from scratch. So you can use any white cake mix for these cupcakes. Your box mix might be different, so we won't be going over the measurements and whatnot. Just follow the instructions on your box and you should be good. For our box mix, we just have to add water, oil, and egg whites. Making sure I didn't get any yolks in the egg whites is hands down the hardest part of this cake mix. So from here on, it's smooth sailing. Then I just mix it all together. You don't want to over mix it, just make sure you get most of the lumps out. This is a great way to work out your arms. Don't skip arm day. Once it's mixed well, I split the batter in half. One half will be for the purple Drifloon, so let's color it now. I'm going to be using some purple food coloring gel to color half of the batter. We highly suggest using gel type, but if you don't have, then normal type is totally fine too. For some reason, it looked blue at first and we freaked out, but it started to turn purple. I don't know why I did that, but talk about a Halloween scare. Next, we're going to place our cupcake wrappers into our pan and scoop an even amount of purple and white batter into each cup. You can use an ice cream scooper to ensure you feel the same amount in each cup, or you can just pour and eyeball it. We did both because honestly, I didn't want to have to wash the ice cream scoop twice. And we actually ran out of the white batter, so we just made more purple drift loons. Make sure to give the pan a couple of taps against the table to release any air bubbles. Then it's time to bake the cupcakes. You want to again follow the baking instructions on your box, but mainly you don't want them to be too brown on top, so make sure to keep an eye on them. If you're not sure if they're fully cooked, you can poke the center with a toothpick. If the toothpick comes out clean, then you're good. If your toothpick has some liquidy batter on it, then keep it in there for a bit longer. That looks good. We're gonna let these cool completely, and in the meantime, Taka is gonna make the sugar cookie. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to make sugar cookie dough that's perfect for cookie cutters. First, we will need one cup of cold, unsalted butter. The key is to keep the butter cold. That's what's gonna allow our cookies to have nice, clean, sharp edges and not turn into an unrecognizable blob while baking. So, we're gonna cut them into small cubes to help it mix easier. But don't handle the butter too long or it might start to melt. So, work fast but carefully and then add it to your mixing bowl. Then, add one cup of granulated sugar and mix it in with the butter until it's combined. Don't over mix your butter. The key is to not let it melt. Start at a slow speed, then slowly increase it to medium. Keep mixing it until it looks something like this. Then we can add the eggs. Add two eggs to the buttery sugar and combine. Again, don't overmix it. You just want the eggs to be well incorporated. It'll kind of look like fluffy scrambled eggs, or I guess it depends on how you scramble your eggs. But anyway, it should look something like this. Next, we'll prepare our dry ingredients. So you'll need three and a half cups of all-purpose flour. You can sift it if you want, but I'm pretty lazy. So yeah, straight in the bowl it goes. Next, add half a cup of cornstarch to the flour. Not a normal cookie ingredient, but it works. So just do it. I promise, I promise it'll be okay. And finally, we're gonna add three fourths teaspoon of salt. Pretty easy, right? Then, add your dry ingredients to your sugary egg mixture. I didn't get a clip of it, but now is the time to add your vanilla extract. I'm also going to be using the dough paddle attachment from here on out. Just keep mixing it until it forms a clean ball, making sure not to overmix it. Now, if you don't have a stand mixer, you can also just mix by hand. Just make sure to fridge the dough often as the heat from your hands will melt the butter. Remember, we need that butter cold. 
it should start to come together and when it looks something like this, you're done. So now it's time to color our dough. So first, I'm going to separate it into four parts. I'm starting by coloring the spirit tombs a pinkish purple color. This pink color I used didn't really turn out so well, so it's time to improvise. Maybe adding some purple would help. Okay, so the purple didn't really help, so maybe if I add some red? At this point, I'm pretty much just throwing any idea out there. But surprisingly, the color actually doesn't look so bad. I like it, so we're moving on. Time for the Litwick Flames. I'm gonna make a shiny version, so I'm adding some teal color. This was a lot easier than the Spirit Tomb, thank goodness. I actually really like how this color turned out. Now for the Yellow Drifloon Mouth. This one was also very easy. I don't know why I started with the hardest color first, but there you go. In your face, banana yellow. Perfect. Now we're going to roll out the dough to roughly a quarter inch thick. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the more even it is, the more even it will bake. So just try your best. So I'm starting with the spirit tomb. I like to roll out the dough between two pieces of parchment paper. I just personally think it makes things a lot less messy. Now again, since I was lazy and I don't trust my tracing skills at all, I decided to 3D model and 3D print cookie cutters. Now we totally understand that not everyone owns a 3D printer, so in that case, you can also cut the shapes out with a knife. The shapes are actually pretty easy with the exception being Spirit Tomb, but I have total faith that you can do it. If not, there's a lot of cool Pokemon cookie cutters online. My favorite place to buy cookie cutters is from Etsy, so go check it out and see what they have. For the eyes and details, I'm using my cookie cutter to stamp in the details instead of cutting through them. It'll make decorating them a lot easier. It was pretty hard to make sure I don't punch through the dough, but I think it came out pretty well if I do say so myself. Once I'm done adding the details, I'm going to throw them in the fridge to keep them nice and cold. A pro tip is to try and not handle the dough with your hands too much because it will heat up the dough and cause the butter to melt. So try and work fast and once you cut out your cookies, pop them back in the fridge for a bit. So now I'm just going to finish cutting out the rest of the Litwick Flames and the mouths of the Drift Loons. Then it's time to bake the cookies. So place your cold cookies into the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 5 to 10 minutes, but check them occasionally to make sure they don't overcook. The key is to cook them all the way through, but pull them out before they start to brown at the top. That's because we want nice, colorful cookies. It's a bit hard to tell, and you might have to sacrifice one cookie to poke and test if it's cooked all the way through, but once they're done, Pull them out and let them cool completely. While they're cooling, I'm going to be making the royal icing. And when I say make, I mean I'm going to be using a bag of icing mix. We were going to make royal icing, but thanks to Kat's sister, she gave us this royal icing mix that she got off Amazon. The link to it will be in the description down below. But you can make royal icing if you want or use store-bought royal icing. It's totally up to you. We really like this royal icing mix because all you need is to mix in water. You can also make the icing thinner or thicker depending on how much water you add. Next, we split the icing into three parts and mix in our food coloring for the Spirit Tomb, Litwick Flames, and the Drift Loon Eyes. I have to make sure that it tastes good, and it does. This royal icing is not overly sweet, which is really nice. This was pretty funny because I was sneaking a taste from each color of the icing, but the black icing turned my tongue, teeth, and lips completely black. 
Kat thought it was so hilarious, and you can see the moment of instant regret. But it tastes good, so I regret nothing. Then we scoop them into Ziploc bags and cut the tip off the corner to make a simple piping bag. Now I'm going to hand them off to Kat to decorate because she's a lot better at it than I am. I'm going to start with the drift loons. I place a small dot of icing for the eyes and then I spread them out into oval shapes with a toothpick. Don't put too much icing as the rounded top will cause the icing to drip down. Then a dab of icing to hold the mouth in place. Then use leftover uncolored icing to put a small dollop on top. Done! Look how cute! For the Litwicks, Taka made these cute cupcake wrappers and printed them out on cardstock. I'm going to use more of the uncolored white icing to spread on top and then use the blue icing to fill in the teal flame on the shiny Litwick. First I'm going to make an outline of the flame and then I'm going to fill it in using the toothpick. Wait for the icing to harden and then stick the flame in. Then just place them in the new cupcake wrapper and it's finished. Finally, saving the hardest for last, I carefully pipe in the green icing making sure not to go too far to the edge. We're going to use a toothpick afterwards to draw it closer to the edges. This was by far the hardest part, but once you get a hang of the viscosity of your icing, you should be good. Once that was completely hardened, I put a dot of black icing and used a toothpick to draw on the eye. We didn't show this, but we baked some box chocolate cupcakes to stick the spirit tombs in. It's the same process as the other cupcakes, so just follow your box instructions and you should be fine. But there you have it, some spooky Pokemon themed treats. And thank you for watching, we hope you enjoyed this Halloween cooking video. We plan on doing more video game cooking videos in the future, so if you want to see that, then don't forget to hit that like button, as well as subscribe and turn on the bell for notifications. But thank you for watching and have a fun and safe Halloween. And. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.